finest sand, brought specially from the Baltic Sea coast. Vanze Bathing Beach has room for more than 40,000 people to relax and enjoy the lakeside. In the 1920s, it was planned to make Vanze Beach a cosmopolitan open-air Lido of monumental proportions. Then the world financial crisis of 1929 put an end to the high-flying plans. Only the first phase of construction was completed in the functional style known as Neue Sachlichkeit, New Objectivity. Axel Ott has been keeping a watchful eye on swimmers for 43 years. He's the longest serving beach attendant in the complex and probably its biggest fan. Wannsee Beach has such atmosphere. You come in and look out over the lake towards Klado and Gato, over Heckershorn. The sand is almost like in the Caribbean. We have more than a kilometer of beach. If you sit and watch the sunset over Schwan and Werder Island, you'll cancel your holiday, buy a season ticket and become a regular here. Axel wants to show us what was originally planned for the bathing beach. These are old projections from 1928. This is how the Lido was originally supposed to look. In fact, it was only built up to this embankment here on the southern end, and that was all. In 1928, it was planned to go as far as Wannsee Pier. That's about another 800 meters. Axel has many more stories, but we have to move on. Our boat is about to leave from the pier where the beach was originally supposed to end. We're going into the city. It'll take us a good three hours on this excursion boat. One last look at the beach, and then we go past the Wannsee Villas, along the River Hafe, towards the city center. Captain Imo Zeliga says Berlin has more water than Stockholm, some 200 kilometers of navigable canals, and about a thousand bridges more waterways than Amsterdam and Venice put together. He's been navigating Berlin's waterways for 32 years. They say Berlin was built from barges. In other words, all the building materials were brought to Berlin on barges back then. Berlin would be unimaginable without water. Coal is still brought on barges to Reuter power station. During the Berlin blockade, it supplied the isolated West Berliners with electricity and ensured their survival. After about two hours, we approach the city center, passing a great deal of modern architecture along the way. After German reunification, a real construction boom took place on the banks of the Spree. This is the German Chancellor's office, where Angela Merkel works. It was the first building in what's now the federal government and parliamentary quarter. Diagonally across from it is the main railway station, and thousands of people enjoying this summer sunshine. But then the crosses behind the Reichstag come into view, a reminder that in the past, the waterway also meant suffering. Here, the Berlin Wall bordered on the Spree, and the virtually uncrossable river itself formed part of the border installation. We get off outside Friedrichstraße railway station and go into the Palace of Tears, where people crossing to the west from East Berlin were once processed. It got its name from the farewell tears that were shed. Now it contains a museum documenting daily life in the divided Germany. You can learn about people such as Reinhard Klaus, who was an environmental activist in the former East Germany. He repeatedly applied for permission to leave the country and after many years received it. He remembers the exact moment when a border official stamped his passport. Then we'd made it. Just a few meters through the tunnel to the underground platform, which were all still East German territory, but we knew nothing could happen to us anymore. Our excursion comes to an end. We disembark at Museum Island. But we decide to leave that for next time and follow the sounds of swing music on the opposite bank. 
For five euros every Friday at Strandbar Mitte, the mother of all Berlin beach bars, you can learn the basics of swing dancing. On other days, it's salsa or tango, always with a fantastic view of Museum Island.